So um, I want to bring, you know, this important discussion to um, talk about randomization in, in clinical research. And, you know, Dr. Scott has mentioned this several times in her talk, and we'll discuss it. But, you know, on the right-hand side, you can see is basically a, um, you know, a study that's looking at some intervention in people who are looking for work. And some people get the intervention and some people get the control. So, you know, basically the randomization, and a lot of you already know this, is like the flip of a coin. And it's done by computer and it assigns research participants into one group or the other group so that it's done by chance and so that it, you know, that different groups are going to receive the different treatments. Now, during the trial or you know, at the end of the trial, the researchers are going to compare the groups and oops, and they're going to look at side effects and they're going to look at safety events, they're going to look at treatment efficacy or effectiveness. And then they're going to be able to compare this well because it's going to be different, different randomized groups. And I'll get into that a little bit in a second. So there's usually a control group. And this control group is either receiving a standard treatment or it could be receiving a placebo, as uh, Rachel has mentioned already. And then it's comparing it to either a new treatment, a new intervention. And it could be several arms also to these, you know, to these different groups. But um, the main importance is to prevent any bias in the study. And especially if a study can be influenced by some other action that a participant or other outside factors, even a doctor putting them on some medication that are not specifically related to the study drug or intervention, because then that could affect the, um, the outcome and then the interpretation of the study results, resulting in a significant error. And, you know, that's going to affect how we use the medications or the interventions later on. So this is this cartoon on the left is just showing, you know, basically, um, you know, after consent, we take uh, different information and we enter it into a computer. And then the participants are selected by a randomizing program. Um, and this is by chance, not by choice. And neither them, their physicians, the study um, investigators, the coordinators, they, they usually cannot, you know, decide which arm it's going to be on. And we've spoken about blinded trials before, but often they're randomized by um, blinded studies, which is what like even Rachel mentioned in some of the PrEP studies. So this is um there are going to be certain characteristics that are decided before the study starts during the study design that the people are going to be sort of, you know, similar in the two groups, like maybe age or um, some other, um, some other treatment health conditions or something like that. And so those are going to be similar between the groups. And then they're going to randomize just by chance into the treatment or the not treatment. So, this way we know that if a difference is found between the groups that we know it's real and we know it's valid from the treatment or intervention itself, but not from other health conditions. Weight or blood pressure or something else. So these, um, you know, we wanna make sure that like we can't influence the outcomes of the study. So, an additional, you know, benefit. Um, so let me just move on, I think. Yeah. So an additional benefit of the study, and this is important because we really want to make sure that there is fair treatment of all participants. We use um, a term equipoise in, in several different ways, but, you know, we use, we want to make sure that it's equitable to all participants and that all volunteers get to have the same opportunity. So like in the cartoon on right, this is probably not an equitable randomization because 50% got shorter vacations. But um, it's, you know, we wanna make sure that everyone has the same chance in the study. And, um, you know, the thing is that some studies can't really even use randomization uh, equitably, like if if there are two drugs that are already approved and on the market that um, 
that, you know, people can't come off the medications and you're comparing them, then you're not going to randomize. So randomization is not always used in every study. Um, like, for instance, let's say now we want to look at um, COVID vaccinations and compare, you know, the, the different vaccine, vaccines to the other, but not necessarily giving them the vaccine. Well, you can't even change that. You can't randomize because people have that, but you can compare them. Um, there are so many different ways of randomizing, and I'm not going to go into the different ways um, at all. Um, so I just want to like bring this back to PrEP. Um, and really most of the trials in PrEP have been randomized trials. Um, the study that Dr. Scott was speaking about, the last study, I don't believe is going to be a randomized study because that's going to be asking people about their perceptions and, and about going on to PrEP. But, you know, in these clinical trials where we're looking at different medications, people have been randomized. And so like in the initial studies, you know, they were, um, they were um, done against placebo. So this is the, um, the um, FTDF study, the Truvada study. And this is what Rachel was talking about in the initial um, men having sex with men or um, transgender men, transgender women, sorry. And, um, and then this, and that was to placebo because at the time you were able to randomize to placebo. And then this next study was the partner study, which also Rachel mentioned, and this was in discord and couples, and they looked at three different arms, one of the arms still being placebo. But in the um, Islatrovir study, which Rachel was mentioning, we can't use the placebo anymore. So we're gonna randomize still, but we're not going to randomize to a placebo controlled, and I, you know, I think I just want people to be at least clear on that, um, you know, on that, and we want to make sure that you know all of these have the same safety profile. So um, that that's really all I want to mention about the randomization. Um, 